Good evening, folks. How's it going? It's uh, Monday, the 6th of uh, December, and it's time yet again for Monday Night Football with myself, Kamombata. And uh, as always, I have a panel uh, that joins me on Mondays to dissect what's been happening over the weekend. And uh, that panel is made up of some familiar faces, uh, Calvin Sosibo and Obina Okafor joining me this evening to uh, go through the results. But obviously the biggest story in the cycle at the moment uh, has to do with Kaiser Chiefs not honoring their game against Cape Town City at the weekend. They'll tell you they were being responsible by making sure they don't pitch up and put anyone in any danger. But of course that is uh, at odds with what the league expects of them as uh, a team in this top division. And so they went against the league who obviously had everybody else in on it and being at the stadium in Cape Town City, they pitched up, the referees were on time, TV crews and everybody else except for the hosts. So that's kind of caused a bit of eruption. We still haven't heard what's going to be, you know, the final sort of punishment um, meted out for this uh, little transgression. I guess uh, the powers that be are busy discussing it, but I will get the thoughts of my panel Good evening, gents. Welcome to the show. Uh, let's start with you, Calvin. Uh, what do you make of all this uh, that's happening with the uh, Kaiser Chiefs and them obviously vacating the, the village and uh, players not being available? I know you have some insights as to what's going on there. Um, maybe you can fill us in. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I think with what Chiefs have done is actually great. We're under a pandemic and uh, it's a good decision that they've taken. I think three points is not important as people's life. I think for them, uh, they come as a top, top, top club to be able to uh, well govern this uh, COVID that we are under. And I'm asking myself that how many teams are actually going to, how many teams are actually testing their players for Chiefs to come out uh, today and then uh, report this number of cases or I'm not, I'm not saying teams are not testing, but if Chiefs can come up with so many cases like that, what about the rest of the team? Are they also complying? Are, also, are, are they also doing it the same as Chiefs? But again, I think the most important part on this one is uh, Chiefs values players' lives. They know that they are families that they need to look after. If they do perish, it's, it's, it's a very, very, very big case, and it's something that, it, that would be a, a, a sad news to us. So for them to, to, to take away all those players, vacate and make sure that everybody quarantines, I think it was a good step by the chairman. Uh, it shows that it's with a team with a, a good ethics and that always looks after their players. Okay. Um, Abina, I mean, would you agree with that? Some say that they should have been able to put together some sort of team um, as far as, you know, maybe dipping into their MDC team uh, and perhaps using some of those players to honor the engagement. What do you make? Do you agree with Kelvin that they took the right step or do you think they should have left it in the hands of the league to at least direct them and guide them as to what their action should be? Um, yeah, good evening to the listeners. Uh... Partly, I agree with him partly, but also partly, um, I also have this, um, this reservation um, uh, that uh, if they've taken a decision against other teams on the same matter, I think also um, it has to go both ways. It, you know, the same measure that they used to serve other teams should come back to them. First of all, these same people, knowing the, the risk they take in when they start and had a meeting and agree before the season starts, that COVID or no COVID, no match should be abandoned or no match should be shifted. And these same people start on the meeting, in a sense. So and it, it comes to where Kep Umoya had the issue last season, they didn't, they forfeited the point. Also, um, I think one other team also had the issue of COVID also. So, but also with Chiefs, look, why I say partly is because they looked at the issue of health, you know, of the players and the team and also the opponent because you're going to play a game knowing that you have COVID. What about the opponent you have to play against? So it's like you 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 infecting other people. 
So, but my 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 worry is how could people of of knowing the the the, the situation, the country, yeah, the whole world is inside on this pandemic, sit and decide and make such a decision that COVID or no COVID, the game to carry on. It makes no sense. In a sense, it makes no sense. That is where you see in Africa, you have people making leaders ruling football and everything without even thinking. Or maybe there is something somewhere or they're using it to antagonize people. When it comes back to them, then that is when they start feeling it. Okay, well, so, I mean, uh, you make a good point because obviously the, 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 the big wigs that exec would have met and, you know, what's good for Goose has to be goose for, uh, good for Gander, right? So obviously it's people sitting around a table uh, thinking to themselves also, and I'm sure it comes into the thinking, what if it, that's my team? You know, so do you think that it, because it's owners kind of deciding, it might, you know, go the, in favor of other owners? Because obviously you want to... The idea I'm getting with all this now is that if it happens to the United, definitely they will, deduct, they will deduct the point. If it happens to, 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 to swallow it or all these things. But, but now it happens to cheese. We want to see what happens then. We want to see. But my problem now is not only this game. Because look, they're saying five games. And you could understand that, that with, with the way this COVID thing and the, uh, for them to be restricted and placed under isolation, you know, uh, for them to... All this thing will go up to two weeks. How many games in two weeks? Because the league now, the, 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 the fixtures is packed because they have to play so many games before yeah. the AFCON. Right, right. So it's not about this point. That is where, because I, I knew that uh, there is ESCO meeting today. They had two two meet they 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 had two meetings today uh, if I'm not mistaken. So it, it's a problem for 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 those five matches for Chiefs to be to 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 um for Chiefs to be for them to give Chiefs five matches you know for them to stay yeah. away five matches it's a big problem for the league at the moment. Yeah, no, for sure. That is a lot of fixtures, and I mean the congestion um, doesn't help anyone. Calvin. So, I mean, you know, you agree with the fact that this one should, you know, shouldn't have been played, but are you in agreement that they must suspend all their fixtures for the month? Is that the right solution for this? And if so, what does that tell other teams? Is that you can have cases in your club and, you know, must just know that the games are going to be called off? Yeah. No, I agree with this one. Uh, going the whole month, again, we have to be mindful that um, it takes a toll on a team plus or minus 20 players that were positive. And I don't think they could have actually fashioned also with the MDC 31. team to represent. 31. 31, plus or minus, yeah. yeah. One players, that's like the whole team. Even if they yeah. tried to have the MDC team still, they wouldn't have made it. Even though the chairman has, has, has came out and said that it's not about the three points, but it's about people's lives. We do understand that. Maybe they should have they should come back again, maybe have a sit down in terms of how they're going to work towards this. Uh, them taking the first options that we are also suggesting the fact that they should put up an MDC team. Why? Reason is because you're going to have a backlog of games. If that's the case, then rather um, they must rather maybe say they're going on a break. The whole league have to go on their break because after this, there's going to be other teams that will come up there and let their cases. They will also take the same uh, pathway as Chiefs has taken, which is the right thing anyway, because remember, nobody knows about this disease and uh, nobody knows how lethal it can be. It's a new variant that uh, uh, all of us are unaware of. So them taking uh, precautionary measures also helps in terms of saving other people's lives. But again, it's, all, it's also going to impact on the sport. I think a proper sit down or also the league having to explore all other avenues in terms of how they can work this one forward. I think it will be helpful for the supporters, also for the sponsorship, at least give us a, a communication lines in order for us to be, a, a, to be okay with the decision that will be taken, which is a central decision rather than a team. Because after this, Maybe another team will come up and say they've got like six or seven or eight cases they cannot uh, partake in the match so, and so forth and so forth. So all the teams may raise their hands because now if they want to start saying 
uh, they, they're going to be in the same process as Chiefs, testing players every day and making sure of that. Complying is a good thing. So we are not quite sure that other teams are also in the same breath as Chiefs. So I'm not I'm going to comment for them, but for Chiefs coming up forward, we want to applaud them for that. Uh, to to say to save other people's life because the people that would have made contact with it would, have, it would have spread all over the league because all the teams that would have played with Chiefs they were going to play with another team and also having contact with yeah. another maybe two or three four five teams so that increases the cases in a way for sure I mean it could possibly end up in that scenario um, and yeah I guess uh, Chiefs will say they took the steps to avoid that uh, here at uh, Front Runner we did catch up with uh, Mazola Mulefe and um, we've done a chat with him that you can catch on the Front Runner platform where he goes into uh, greater detail around this but fans of uh, Kaiser Chiefs uh, drop us a line or comment uh, in the YouTube chat section let's get your thoughts on this one and, t- uh, and fans of other teams do you think your teams are being as thorough uh, Chiefs maybe being punished for for coming out and, and, and being honest and saying this is the crisis that we have when some you know other parties maybe aren't being as on, honest. We don't know. We don't know as far as uh, the cases are concerned. You know which clubs are being fully uh, declaratory of uh, what's happening inside their camps. But yeah, we wait to see with bated breath. Uh, what the powers that be have to say about this one. Let's get into uh, talking the games that actually did happen. Uh, and one saw uh, Sundowns in action against uh, Stellenbosch. And it was uh, Stellenbosch who took the lead in this one. But uh, through Lake, they were able to rescue something from this one after uh, Stellis had gone ahead through Mendieta from the penalty spot. Uh, gentlemen, let's talk about this one. Um, you know, I guess you know, Sundowns are going to drop points and Stelis are a good team, Obina. Um, you know, was there anything in that performance that uh, would suggest that there's a, a slight wobble or do you just think that they came across a, a motivated home side, it must be said, in Stelis, uh, who have been playing well this season and, you know, against big opponents, we know how other teams will, will, will raise their game. Is that what we just saw at the weekend? Yeah, um, I think I've said this before here when we talked about how a team could approach a sundown thing. Uh, and I said, uh, it's oh, I think we lost the Bina there for a sec. Um, he seems to be frozen. Yeah. Yeah, uh, okay. Obina? It's about you playing the game. Not... Uh, uh, Obina, we're going to need you to start your answer again because, like, as you went for it, we couldn't hear you. Can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, please, please, beginning. please start from the beginning. You got cut off by uh, the bad signal. Yeah, I'm saying that uh, I had, uh, I've said this here before, the approach you approach sundown uh, motivates them to play against you. Because in football, yeah, this is about 11 against 11. We know, yes, they have this, they have one of the best uh, players. They have good quality. But again, if, if a team in the PSL could come out, build that confidence and approach team, I said here it's about imposing yourself your game plan, you know what I'm saying? Not going back to seat. When you sit back and play against a team like Sundown, they will frustrate you with the ball because they... They know how to keep the ball. They stingy with the ball. You know, but then when you force them, when you push them backwards, you know, it makes it easier for them also to come with to come on you with fear, knowing that you will come on them. So I think that is what happened with uh with uh with uh Sally, uh and the rest, you know. Um yeah, but it was a good game from uh Cape Town City and everything, but I believe uh, Sally had a game plan uh, for them to approach this game, and it worked for them. Okay, and I mean, some of the belief, it would seem, that uh, Steve has built into the side, Kelvin, um, has alluded to by, by coach uh, Manloba that, you know, maybe Steli's actually just wanted this a bit more, you know, a bit hungrier uh, than his uh, table-topping players would you agree with that assertion? Did they look the hungrier team? And, you know, does sometimes being at the top kind of, you know, settle in with a bit of complacency, knowing you're a good side, knowing that you've got the weapons to dismantle most teams, uh, but then come up against a team that just has a bit more motivation than you do? 
Yeah, for sure. Um, I think when I look at the, the statistics of the game, I think Sundowns pushed uh, Stelis because you're looking at the uh, position 76% and also looking at short 15, 15 shots and then shots on target five uh, versus one. So Sundowns did create chances, um, even though they were just awarded one goal, which wasn't enough for them. I think also them picking up more draws, it actually drops the momentum. It also gives them an opportunity also to learn from uh, the games that um, are being played at hand, that teams are starting to figure them out, even though they enjoy the best position on the ball and then their team that likes to build up, and their team that plays play, play in phases, which we saw the likes of uh, players coming from the side, Mudao, who I feel that has done absolutely well for Sundowns, has joined in to that team. And uh, he has shown very great signs of him being a very, very, very top player. You also saw my uh, Maema on, on the same fold, him also being part of that Sundowns team. I think the rotation for Sundowns right now needs to start being activated because all, all the players that are there now start to understand the scheme of things on, on how Sundowns wants to play in terms of how they, they create their opportunities. Yes, they did, they did have uh, their, their, their strong personality up front where they had the Shaolile, uh, the Zwane, they had the Kutumela. But now teams are starting to understand in terms of how they are playing and how they need to set themselves. With what Stelis did at this point, they made sure that uh, they apply a medium low block in terms of not allowing Shaolile more movement behind them, but to play in front of them. And with Zwane also having uh, 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 possessing the ball in the less dangerous areas, which is in average, other Zwane will be in the box maybe 10 or 15 or 15 times in the box in most games. But at this game, he played more deeper which is they forced him not to have more entrance on their own box. Uh, having a leadership of um, a player like uh, uh, um, Kennedy Moweni taking over from Dennis Sonyango, um, it still gives a good setup at the back in terms of the, the discipline, the control, how to marshal, how to manage the game, uh, posting confidence on those players and playing exactly how the team is supposed to play when you have a senior player at the back. So for me, I think a lot of players have come up and raising their hands with the Jali being having a consistent performances as well, uh, making sure that there's, uh, in duels, he's the one that always win most of the duels in the middle. Because if you see, in average, he's the one that is always mostly on the ball with, uh, when it comes to Mamelodi Sundown. So it's one of the positives, yes. I, I still feel that also the players that are also on the bench, like the likes of Kapina, should be given opportunity for Yomshishi um, just to give him a run, also to give that element of creativity because now teams are starting to uh, double up on Mshishi, double up on uh, on uh, on uh, Kutumela, double up on also on Shaolili. If they can sort those three out, that's the movement of Sundowns can be forced to play into a more consecutive game because they're a team that likes to build a lot. Um, some would suggest that uh, maybe if a young certain Mr. Mayama was in the side, things might have been different. Do you maybe agree with that assertion that they missed him on the day, young Neo Mayama? I do agree on, the, on, on, on that in terms of the energy, the speed, the creativity, and the energy that it brings into the game. It's true. You needed somebody like that that's going to offload the work rate from Shaolile, which is uh, their workhorse. So you need somebody like Mayema who will always come into those half spaces, who always pick up those loose balls because when Shaolile is on 24-hour guard, you need somebody that is going to come up with other solutions because if you have your other Zwane, your, 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 your Temba Zwane being uh, tightly marked and you have your Shaolile being tightly marked and you have your Kutumela also being tightly marked, you need somebody that is at least maybe given a little a less of a respect because he has been on the radar now, he has been scoring goals, assisting, being in the box. They are also starting to look uh, up to him in terms of coming up with solution. So I think they did miss him on this game for energy sake and speed and also offering that last push in the final game. Okay, uh, young uh, Miami being injured in that game against Kukune. Um, so he was unavailable. And speaking of Kukune, uh, I think it's a perfect way to segue into their impressive results uh, against uh, Super Sport United. Um, in the dying throes of that one, they were able to nick a, a goal. But in a game that saw both sides reduced uh, to 10 men. Now, I know referees have a hard job, but I, I don't know, man. Those, those penalties. 
I mean, straight red for both of them. Uh, I, 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 Victor Gomes, I, you know, clearly he probably will be fine, you know, from a perspective of the commissioner or whatever. He's probably following things a little to the T. Um, Kelvin, do you think those were two straight red cards? Well, having a look at it in a second time with the, with the benefit of a slow motion, I think it was a bit harsh um, with those red cards. I think they were just a makeshift in a way. Well, I feel that firstly, you have to look at the intent, the intention. Uh, was the player inten intention is to play the ball? No. Was the player, um, uh, uh, was the player's challenge malicious? Not in a way, but it, I think maybe a little bit of a raised foot maybe might complain about, but it's not even a full compact. So he didn't want to have that full contact in order for a player to be injured. So I think maybe we have controlled the, the game a little bit better because in a way it changed the complex of that game and it made that game to be very, very boring because both teams tried to play in transition. Even the goal that you saw that got scored, it was a super sport a defense that got disorganized. And then they started opening the, the, the defensive line because I think for a player like uh, your Onismo Basira should have been more smarter in understanding that they are one man down. There's no need for him to push high up or a team that is playing one player short. For them to be playing a high line, it's highly impossible. But I think this is this is where Skukun has came, uh, came in, where in most of their games, when they see that they are not a good match, they will always sit deep into a very low deep block and, and try and catch team on, on transition catch them on a counter-attack at, at all costs, which is, at this time, it profited them very well in the last nine minutes because that game looked like solid that it was going to be a draw. So for me, yeah, I think with Victor Gomes being fo following things right to the T sometimes gets way, uh, he, he, he does it maybe, like he does it over, he goes way overboard in, in making those decisions. I think sometimes you just need to keep the game flowing. And I know, for him, I've been ref by him. What he demands is respect. So his respect is the red card, you know. Even if you're trying to ask a question or want to understand what, what did you do wrong or so forth, the next thing will tell you that I'm going to take you up. That's why Peter will always come in and say, well, Victor Gom took the show. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's a little of a weird one, Robin. I mean, it, it, do you feel that... Um... There's a, a mutual respect from the referee in Victor Gomes to the players. Um, and your thoughts very quickly as to, you know, the calls that he made on the weekend. Um, do you think he was in the right or do you think it was just Victor Gomes being a little too much of Victor Gomes? Well, uh, Victor Gomes, we all know, is the center of attraction. You know, he's always there, always the guy that uh, they People came to watch, you know, it's not about the two teams. <laughs> um, but but uh, honestly, to be sincere, I think the two red cards was really, he was spot on. Um, it was a, a, a career, a career uh, threatened uh, tackling there. Nah, so, nah, so, nah, 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 nah. Obina, no yeah, ways, no I, ways. I that first one by Mube, right? By yes. Mube. Yeah. He went, right? That follow-through yeah. was after yeah. his foot was in a different direction. Towards the yeah. end of the tackle, the stud yeah. showed. Towards the, the end of the tackle. No, but, but the intent you, would have been... If the intent was there, the studs the, would have been there from the beginning. Yes. The what was to hurt the player. Say, when we say... It's intent, a contact sport. Intent, it's a contact the, sport. When we, say, no, when we say intent, the intent doesn't mean you come in directly to kick the person, no. But the intention, the, like the, the first of all, him going down with the stud showing and showing on what on the other player's foot. If that guy would have kept his leg down a bit, it the leg would have just like I'm just telling you the cause. I'm not I'm not a fan of Victor Gomez. I'm not a fan of him. I'm told, but the I call the two. Uh, the two red card was was just spot on for me. Hey, hmm. no, guys, I don't know. Me personally, I don't think they were. It's a contact sport. The players are going to come together. I think if the man had gone straight studs from the onset, for sure, red yeah. card, yellow at the most for me. And I feel the same but, about but the second look, one for me. Uh, first well. of all, let me tell you something. Football, uh, the tackle, all this tackle we know is sometimes you go late. Or sometimes when you go, the person puts his leg, all these things, it, it, it's just it. But again, when it happens, it happens. 
you know, did you hit him? Yes. Did you hit him hard? If if he would have, you understand, that is what they would check. If he would have, what would happen? This is the career threatening injury. is a red card. So they don't try to understand agree. that you went, mm -mm. you mm -mm. know, I don't, I don't know. Mean, but for mm -mm. me, it was a red mm -mm. card. I want to get let's get some consensus here. If you're watching, please drop your comments in the in the in the chat section there. We want to know. Do you think it's a red card? Obviously, we all have the benefit of having it slow down, looking at it again. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, for, for me, it's just one of those things where it's just like, no, yellow at most. And once again, this is where VAR comes in. Because I don't know, you know, if it's, it's one of those things where maybe it could have been reduced to a yellow. I, I don't know if it was a straight red. Koketo Miller reckons, I think Victor G had eyes on him from the international coaching perspective and he needed to show his tough ref personality. It was a little too extreme for my view. But hey, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement. A, a bit too extreme. I mean, you know, you have to think about the occasion, about, you know what I mean? Like there's things as a referee you must think about. Like um, there's no need. Seven minutes in. Like calm things mm -hmm. down, things yeah, you know, calm so things crazy. down. You know, tell the players if it's a no more. Yeah, like you know, we've got what at that point we've got uh, eighty three minutes still to go. You know, yeah. um, why? I, I just I don't know. I I don't see him as someone who's thinking in the spirit of the game. I think he's thinking about himself and his career. And you know, these moments are there for him to show that he's the man. Um, Moshe Godfrey Musoto says, Obina, I agree. Uh, he, uh, Gomez Victor just uh, wants attention. Remember, it's been long since he last made headlines. <laughs> uh, and then both teams obviously had to throw their tactics out the window. I mean, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I don't like his style. Um, you know, most times I'm willing to defend him because, you know, I think a lot of the time he gets things right. But this time around, I don't think he did. But let's not take away from the fact that, you know, Skukune are, are, are showing credentials um, that they're a lot better than, you know, having come up you know and just being in the in the top flight kelvin we saw it last season with swallows they're doing it this season but does it not maybe put pressure on the likes of gaetano who's been in the league who's had stability who's had these players and now here you are being swept aside by a team who are essentially you know new boys to the top league and here you are a, a model of you know um stability but the results aren't leading to the positions that a Kukuni find themselves on the table. What does that say yeah. about Super Sport United? I'm just, I'm just happy for Kukuni. Second on the logs, bounce back from a 2-0 loss from Sundowns. Uh, on their last five games, three wins, two losses, 13 matches played and 23 points. This is a team that has a plan. This is a team that really, really wants to do well. I know first-timers on the league, you always are the ones that will give an extra effort, run the extra yards, cover the extra, uh, cover the extra meters, manage your spaces. And what a way to do it. There's a coach there who's very well uh, experienced um, in Sinong, who uh, has conditioned that team in playing according to their strength. Yes, with Super Sport United, a well old machine. But when I look at the lineup and I saw in the middle, you look at uh, the jewels there. You see the Yusuf Mart versus um, Don. And then you see Katsande versus Mbata. You see uh, Jima versus uh, Kabuza, which is the, those were the, the real tough, 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 tough battles that you actually have. Mm -hmm. If you saw how Jima pocketed uh, uh, Kabuza, from every side or any angle that you run, he was always there because he's given an assignment in terms of worry about Kabuza because Kabuza at, no, at, at late has been a danger man and is the one that has actually been creating and scoring goals. In the middle, I think that it was a little bit weak in a sense because uh, you look at the likes of the experience from Katande playing against Dawn, a youngster, game temperament as well, also uh, bullying the youngster. It showed uh, that Kaitane might, might have maybe swapped the tactics around and try maybe overload uh, the middle because you know Eskukune will always sit, be a team that would want to sit deep. So a team that would want to sit deep, you want to unlock them to the side. You cannot have a passage of play in the middle because you could see from their, their starting lineup, having Katande, Yusef Mart in the middle, it, te it tells you something in terms of how they want to play and they don't want to be broken or start opening lines. In their phase of their, their defense, 
you could see their visibility as well in terms of how they want to defend with super sport they were in in patches in how they played they didn't really show any intent and you see you could you could see that they're missing um, another fine detail which is Hrobla, which was not there in order to support Kabuza because Kabuza would be the workhorse but who's up there to actually to finish and not, not having a, a person that will take over from um, Hrobla, it's it's a disadvantage for a team that is well experienced that understand in terms of now the position that is has been yes they've been having a good run but now it's time to re uh, re-look at in terms of their system and how they want to play and what are the changes they need to make because his job is on the line right now. Obina, does it tell us anything about the league? That's a team that's come up, uh, you know, currently sitting in second position. Um, you know, does it say anything? I mean, it's a, another season now where a team has just come up is sitting in the upper echelons of the table. Does that uh, say anything about the standard of the league at all, do you think? No, no, it doesn't. It does happen all over the world. You know, it does happen. You know, sometimes, and it, 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 it's not something that happens all the time. Yes, maybe yes, this one, last season it was Swallows, this season uh, Sakukune. But again, uh, a typical example, Leeds, uh, Leeds, when they came in last season, they were just on top of first round, then second round, they, they started going down, but they ended very well last season. This season, we saw the team like Brentford coming on. You know, it does happen um, occasionally, but it shows for me, it shows that um, there is competition. The teams are preparing, knowing that they're coming into the league. If For me, if they could prepare like this, coming to the league at first and maintaining, this is where uh, um, I do have a problem with team, not maintaining um, the winning formula, not maintaining what they have done to be at this stage. You see a team like Sekunde now, next season, they start looking for another coach to come and help, uh, to come and help out. They start destabilizing. One way or the other, we African, we always find a way to destabilize something that we've built with our own hands. So um, I don't think it tells anything about it, but it also tells us that most of the teams that are coming up now are not just pushovers. And it's good for the league. No, for sure. It is indeed. Congratulations to Skukune and Coach Mack and the likes of uh, Tabo Sanong for, you know, fashioning another famous victory to have them, you know, 13 games played on 23 points, sitting second in the table. That is a good, good first start uh, for your new season. And obviously, you know, let's hope that uh, the management there are, are smart enough to learn from those who've come before them and not destabilize things, as you've uh, pointed out there, uh, Obina. Let's speak about uh, Swallows and uh, their new coach, Dylan Kerr. Um, you know, I guess it wasn't, you know, it was more like, welcome to Swallows, Dylan. We draw here. Uh, and uh, they did against Maritzburg 1-1. Uh, uh, I guess, you know, it's not a loss, Kelvin. So for the coach, something for him to build on. And, you know... It always takes time for any new coach to kind of bed in their ideas uh, unless you're Ralph Rangnick. But, you know, for the most part, um, he's going to need some time. And I guess they didn't lose. So there'll be some positives to take from that. Yeah, the, 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 the best part is that they didn't lose the game. I think what Dylan Kerr needs to do at this particular point is just to get into the player's side. The motivation is more important at this point because I think those players, that are, they are quality. They can fashion a win. He does have a structure. He does have a concept in terms of how he wants his teams, uh, his teams to play. We have seen him coaching in the league. We have seen how teams have actually come up from very, very, very uh, bad uh, uh, positions and climbing up the, the, the league. So I think just for him at this particular point, it's all about having to get into the player's mind, motivate them. And most of the stuff that they've been doing with, um, with uh, Truta, it's, I think it, there's a lot of similarities because these are both coaches who are highly competent in terms of understanding the game and uh, having their own philosophy. So I think it's just going to be a little bit of a tweak because when I saw how he played, he still used the same system that has been used by Truta, which is a 4-3-3, which allows him to be more attacking-minded uh, attacking and also try and consolidate in terms of defense. It's, it's, a, it's a system that allows you to play in, in a diamond shape and also try and minimize as many as much as possible uh, spaces that you may have in the, in the field. So covering ground 
and understanding spaces is, is, is one of the biggest things that these, both these coaches uh, did well. So what they need to work on it, on this one for Dylan Kerr, at least to have an edge on it, is start by at least maybe try to sort out the midfield, uh, the, the backline pairing, uh, have some leadership at the back. We see uh, with, the, with the likes of um, uh, Jody February, that has came in for, 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 for that, that has been uh, given an opportunity to play. I think also it need, it need, also needs that confidence to, to start controlling the team at the back. Yes, he's a good goalkeeper, but they just need that extra boost because it seems as if that team is not highly confident at the back. And also still sharpen their skills in terms of how they, they, they used to find goals. The Hamal D needs to come back to life. They need to start creating goals. You see the Solomon that are trying by all means, to, to, to fashion um, something for uh, Morocco Swallows. Lebuha Mukwena also coming in, trying to make an addition, even though his legs now is a little bit heavier. But the game intelligence and the game inside helps him a lot and he's a good leader, he's a good leader on that team. You can see the intention in terms of what they're trying to do, uh, but it's just that final third. They just need to work much in terms of their defense and on their final third, then they could fashion a win. I mean, how big a, a loss has Ngobo been? I mean, you, we speak about him not really getting the game time. He wanted at Kaiser Chiefs. He's slowly been, you know, introduced into the side. But have they ever really, you know, been able to, to replace him, do you think? Um, I, I think for now, he, um, the coach knows how, uh, knows he has a plan to use him or, you know, trying to use him in terms of, you know, covering up uh, some certain positions, you know, because, um, like I said, I didn't watch him much uh, last season. I didn't know him because I was not in the country. Um, but I heard he was more of a centre-back. But watching him play as a defensive midfielder also, I think he has a lot of potential that the coach have seen and trying to, to, to find a position for him. But um, I've, I watched him against Marisberg United. He's quite an exciting young player that still needs uh, much opportunity in, 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 in a big team. You know, it's, a different when, it's different when you come from a smaller team, you know, or an average team coming to a bigger team like this, that, um, that every game is important. Every game you're playing is like you're playing uh, a final Um against other teams because other teams are coming to play Chiefs. It's, it's, it's a bonus to them, you know. They, they raise their game. Uh, to, so you, as a player coming from a, young, from a small team, you need to be prepared to know that each and every game has to be that final. Unlike when you were in that smaller team playing against Chiefs, you put on your best to play against Chiefs. But in Chiefs, you have to put on your best, even in training every time. I don't think he's. Um, I don't think it will take time for him to cement um, a JC and having much game time in in, in Chiefs. Um, it's just with time. I just believe his time is already coming gradually. Okay, we'll see. I mean, yeah, uh, obviously for him, it was about making a big move to a big team. It's not quite worked yeah. out just yet, but uh, maybe time will tell. For one draw to another, Amazulu in action against uh, Royal AM uh, in a game that saw the goalkeeper for Royal AM be the man of the match there. But uh, I also saw a terrible, terrible miss from Skakane uh, that could have essentially won them that game. And Kelvin, these are the things that the coaches, you know, cry about. Is that like just, you know, that final t temerity in the 18-yard area to just calm down, relax, and, you know, execute your job. That was a, a good opportunity, I think, with about maybe 13 minutes left of that game. Could have sealed it and, and, and gotten the three points. But he goes wide. Benny, you know, now thinking to himself that his team are very much looking like the next Swallows FC in terms of, like, all these draws that they're getting this season, especially. Yeah, I think a, a defender finding himself on unfamiliar territory, I think he nerves took over there. He already saw himself on the score sheets. Yeah, so what do you expect? They, all they know, defenders, all they know is to defend. That's, that's the primary role. But yeah, again, another draw for Benny. Um, I think he's getting more frustrated now because uh, it seems as if players are not really trusting the, the game plan that Benny wants to uh, impose on the players. 
And once the players start understanding, because I, as a coach myself, I understand that sometimes when I lose, at least let us lose according to the game plan that we are trying to put up on the match day. Don't try and come up with your own thing, because one thing that I've, I've, I've witnessed a lot is that five minutes just after the team talk uh, from the dressing room, you come out to go for a warm up. Immediately, just the game, when the game starts, we start playing the normal way the coach has told us on how to play. We start applying ourselves. Ten minutes after that, players start doing their own thing. This is what frustrates the coaches most because you will understand if you're, you're a team that keeps the ball a lot, start having a slow build up at the back. You expect yourself to play exactly like that because you have analyzed all teams and teams that you're going to be playing against. Now, why change now and start playing risky football, knowing very well that you are playing according to their strength? I think this is one of the frustrations that the coaches will always have when players start taking uh, matters into their own hands and mm. wanting to play their own game in mm. order, in a way, going against what the coaches has planned. Mm. Because we do plan this for strength and we do watch uh, video analysis. I think when players start taking this seriously, you, 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 you see the difference between uh, the players abroad and the players at home, how tactically sound they are and what areas they possess the ball and what areas for them feel like it's criminal if they lose the ball. But the same, we do not have the same agency here. And with Benny, the frustration will always come about when the strikers will practice these opportunities that they are creating. Now, when they do not convert, come training day, a striker will score nine, 10 goals. Come match day, you will miss the simplest um, the goals that is supposed to put away. Why? Because training sessions are always the hardest because you know that when it comes to the game, it's supposed to be like something that you have to just walk through. Now, when you have players that are starting to apply their own minds, I think the frustration from the coaches start happening in that way. But other than less, he played against a very, very, very clever coach, uh, which is very technical, uh, technically sound to understand in terms of um, the high form that, uh, that, that uh, the form that the Amazulu have been uh, in and the way that Amazulu play. So minimizing them and forcing them to play an unfamiliar uh, uh, game, uh, game uh, makes the other coach to be happy in a way because if they would play their own game, they would have easily have won the game. But playing with a coach that will always unsettle you and will always have different variations and different system that will apply in the game because you'll find this coach will always change the system every three or four times in a match. Yeah, that is uh, Amazulu's fourth draw in four games. Ah. Um, Obina, this approach that uh, Benny has, this tough love, uh, I, I, I'll call it that, um, approach he has to you know putting his players a little on blast, uh, how far do you think that's going to get him? Um. Look, uh, I think uh, yesterday I was just thinking about the same thing. Um, but again, uh, I don't think maybe maybe the way he's, he's talking in the media about the players may be the problem. But if you said tough love in terms of pushing the players, if he does that, I think it's, it's, it's okay for him. It's good for the players also to be pushed. Because one thing with footballers um, is that we want to play at our own pace. We, 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 we don't want to be pushed. You know, you, you want to enjoy, you want to play at your own pace. So if, if most coaches are failing because they're allowing players to play at their own pace, you know, but if you see other coaches that are excelling, they, a player needs to play at the, at the, at the tempo that they want, the mm. intensity they want. You have mm -hmm. to play. We, right. I looked at the game, the last game of Ole and the game that uh, Ralph came in now. You see the intent, it's the same players, but now you look at the seriousness, the way the players were running yesterday, for, uh, the Manchester United player, the way they were running. Then you see that these players, and, and it tells you about Conte, club and to tell the way they are they are people that push players you know mm -hmm. so for me Benny Benny has been unlucky for the past games I, I was opportune to watch him here against Marisberg United um, they play very well against Real AM they dominated the game but the finishing is the problem mm -hmm. and again somehow I, I was questioning as a coach I'm, I'm that person that Critically, I, 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 I criticize coaches positively in order for me to learn. 
I, I looked at uh, Benny's style of play. I, I get to understand that it's not something that is structured to come all the time, that happens all the time. It, it happens rarely, like this person falls into this position, this person falls into this position. It, it, it randomly, you understand? But again, mm. you know, it, it, it happens that they find themselves that they couldn't finish. All the time they find themselves, they couldn't finish. So it's the same thing that we have here. And I think that is what is worrying uh, uh, Benny now. Not that the team is not playing well. They defend him very well. They, they, they collectively, they keep the ball, they play, they attack. And this boy has been a great player for them. They jump, the, the white guy, the tall white guy. He's been brilliant for them. So I just believe when the goal will start coming, it will come. But the team, honestly, for me, I just, yes, he's a coach that wants to win. He's putting himself under pressure, you know, like he wants to win. But I believe that if the team just starts winning one now, they will win. Because honestly, I, I watch them. They're a very good team. Not, I, I don't want to take anything away from them. Marisbeck, they dominated. Um, um, Royal AM, they dominated. But the goal is not coming. Yeah, but the, yeah. the, the, point, the point is, Obina, is um, De Jong is playing very well. But is he getting enough support? Are they quick to offer him support to surround yes, him? Yes, yes, because him? Kalenge, Kalenge is, is supporting him very well. Then this, is it Male? Um, there's another young boy, Malema or what? Uh, yeah. There's also so another that, young player. They, they had support. They had support. Yes, I, I'm trying to get to this point whereby um, you play against a team that plays more or less the same as you play. So what's the option now that, uh, what, what, does, what option does it leave you with? Because uh, Royal, AM, Royal AM can defend well and also they are ball, uh, ball uh, orientated team. They're a team that likes to play as same as uh, Amazon. So the build up from both teams are slow. But now when you come to the incision area where now, it's in the middle where now the real jewels are actually uh, combated. Now this is where you see the gaps in between because uh, Amazulu are too slow on getting to the second phase of attack. And also when they break their lines in terms of their final third, you'll always find De Jong into good spaces, but the support always comes late. So now which other system could they uh, employ in them getting more quicker to the box? Because on their build-up, it allows team to drop into their, to, to their first uh, line of defense. It, it allows them to drop to a mid-block in order to see them if they can press or not. Being a Mazulu that can play very well, no team that is trying to press a Mazulu high up because they know that they can come out easily. So now playing but, against the same team that plays within the same structure, if for me, it questions me like when they're getting draws. It means for me that they're not quickly getting into the final third and there's not enough support when it comes to okay, the Okay, um, I'll, I'll tell you this. That is why maybe in a way you didn't understand me when I said when, when it's, it, it's randomly, you get random players in that goal-scoring opportunity, that right. goal is for space. It's not a structured thing. When I mean a structured thing, it becomes uh, where it's repeated. It's something that, that, that has been installed in the team. In a sense, right. I, I don't to come to, I don't know if you understand where I'm going. So, but let me put it this way to tell you that more of their attack are more of individual brilliance. Let me just put it this way. Maybe now Which you understand. Which is where the goals will not come. Exactly. This, yeah, you, that's know, my we, question. Uh, you, you, listen, listen. We, you at the moment, you, you're not the coach of, of Amazon. I'm not the but coach of Amazon. But I can see what's happening. All we do here now is to analyze what has been done. I cannot change but them. But then I cannot you cannot them. complain about goals if you got individual players who are attacking. <laughs> Look, uh, I, I'm just doing my analysis of base. I of understand. What I'm with you. Uh, I'm with so you. So I'm, I I'm, I'm to... highlighting the problem. Look, this is what I saw because when you see Kalinga, you see Kalinga the way he rounds with the ball. He runs, he runs, he runs, he finishes. Then uh, they draw the to same him to support and pick up that creating of the, uh, the that opportunity. Nobody. But, but again, and you cannot it, have an isolated team. You need to work as a bunch because that forward formation. Now, needs now you get it. Now, now so you get it. Coach, so I think so you just move on. 
<laughs> so I think you guys are saying that, the same thing, guys. I, <laughs> I think you actually all are saying the same thing. I think for, for a coach that is a striker, that should be a position where he's excelling. Working in terms of the pattern of runs, how the strikers need to run the front three or whether he's using a, a two uh, No, 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 I, I leave that. Most of us in Africa, do. that is why I will tell you the truth. I, I, I put my heads off. There is somebody I've been close to, Made in Dog. You know, he does that all the time. I, I was in their training. I, I'm opportune to go to the training every day. You know, anytime they train, they call me, I go there every day. It's something that, you see, even when I was playing, there are things I'm learning as what he's teaching the strikers that I didn't even know. That when the ball is coming, you run away from the ball. So, but when we used to play, you see somebody coming with the ball, you run it towards that place where the ball. So, you but see, I, these are... Obina, my point is, Ben is a striker. That's what I'm saying. Maybe he's no, doing it. Maybe the players are not showing it. Maybe he's, um, he's training them. Maybe they're not showing it. Okay. That's, that's the thing. That's a good point, right? That's a good point, Obina, that you make. Because essentially, your coach is trying to make you a better player. And yes. if you take on board what he's trying to tell you and you, and you listen to him, there's chances that you actually might just improve. Yes, but it's attitude factor. Some players, some players don't want to where I have a problem players. with many coaches where they will tell you if they win, they'll tell you, No, my game plan works. What about when they lose? Is it not your game plan that makes them lose? It's it, mm -hmm. it, 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 this is a situation of what is happening in, in, in most teams. You know, they tell you about game plan and no game plan. But my take on this is like what Sosibo said that. Benny is a striker, he's supposed, he's supposed to be. No, I just believe that no coach will come into a game without preparing the players of, uh, on, how, uh, on how to play. They will prepare the players on how to play. But sometimes the player will go in and do their own things. Yeah, no, but sure. be, Fair enough, it can happen like that. There are two strikers there. It's Benny and Nombete. So I'm expecting them to have an advantage in terms of how to teach, teach them how to finish. So their way, they can combine both their minds since they're strikers. I'm not saying, I'm, all I'm saying is they should be at a level whereby they are getting goals. They shouldn't be struggling because they need to know the patterns in terms of how they need to attack. So as I have a defender did and I'm the coach. Chance, you did you see the chance that, of, that needs, did you see that chance where the Amazulu player play. rounded the goalkeeper? Did you see that Vegas? chance? Did you Vegas? see the chance where the uh yes, Kakani? Yeah, yeah, it was it was Kakani in the 77th yes. minute, 78th minute. He had a That's chance. A That's the defender that we were ball, saying. That ball yes. as a strike. If, if he's a striker, uh -uh, there's no the, ifs. There was the defender. Where was the striker? The no, ifs. That's a, look, but listen, everybody can find themselves in, in a position, it, it does mm. happen. Fred right. scored against Fred scored against, uh, uh, for my you. It doesn't mean he's a striker. But right. what I'm saying is, if it was a striker, you don't even need to because he had all the spaces. He doesn't even need to round the goalkeeper. He just need to look at the space and put the ball. I'll give you an example like the goal um, um, Sancho scored against Liverpool. He ran. He had a chance to dribble the goalkeeper, but he come with a move. He just placed the ball. So, but this guy wanted to dribble the goalkeeper. He rounded the goalkeeper, then he put the ball out. So, for me, Ben is doing well. But mm -hmm. they just need to get that opportunity to start putting the ball at the back of the net. And if they start doing it one, two, three, all the time, I, I think they will also be a team that they were last season. Okay. Banzi Jabasi says, Benny needs players that will better understand his coaching philosophy. Uh, this is always coming into the discussion, uh, Kelvin, about how, you know, he's always crying about the lack of resources that he has. But I mean, I'm just looking at those players that he started with up front, man. It's crazy. De Jong, you got Buchanan, you got Mulenga, you got Mlambo, you got Memela. Yeah. Dude, he's still on the bench. You know what I mean? Like, does he really... Does he really need more players? And, and if so, who's he going to forget? <laughs> Kampa Maholona says, I feel like Benny's attacking structure doesn't help the team create chances. Uh, that's another one there. 
um, coming through. Maybe that's why you find the likes of Skakani in odd positions and not being able to leverage those into a goal scoring opportunity. Calvin, you shake. Momentum, man. Don't play the 4 4 1 4 1. Put and Tuli and put the Dion. Then you're going to get goals. Yeah. So he's yeah. being too conservative. <laughs> in no, 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 no. Wait, wait, wait. wait. So Sibo, come again. What? He must play with two strikers up front, is what Sobi, uh, uh, Sosibo is saying. No, but Sosibo, uh, come on, man. How? Is, is it necessary that you have to have one strike, uh, two striker for you to have goals? No, it's not the point. The point is you okay. having more leverage. You're going to have more attacking opportunity because two center backs when you are playing two natural strikers, it's difficult for center backs. But it's easier when you play with one striker. Because this is when now they can have an opportunity to push one. This is like how Sundowns uh, uh, managed to do it well. Where most teams will come with one striker. And what they will do is, on their rest defense, they will always make sure that there's one striker there they will pick. So even though when you, you, when you, when you make runs on a wider position, they will just have to overload that side because you're moving to, to, watch, to the furthest of your post. But if you got two, you got one striker coming deep and you got one city. The same as when you saw with Supersport and uh, Supersport when Kabuza was playing and uh, Hrobra wasn't there. You can see the difference when both of them are playing because they, are, they have natural instincts of attacking the goal. Now, when you have one striker, you find a De Jong who will always be on a wider position and who you expect. You expect the Buchanan to come to drive into the middle. Um, you see, maybe, maybe you see, that is where coaching comes in from. I, I think I'm, I'm different from that. Because for me, and, and I think uh, Pep also said that one time, when you put two players, what you keep at the back is what the, the opponent will keep is three. When you keep one, what the opponent will keep is two. Right. Which is an overload, yes. So now, and this is where people need to understand when you play one from behind. So when I keep one, it's not necessarily that we play with one striker. You know, people always say when you play, you can play with one striker, but two attacking players more that it's coming from the side. But you put in one, but that one we need to get into the box. We are not that disciplined on understanding that system. No, I don't agree. He uh, said it takes long for players to get into the box. This is the same thing Ben is complaining about. These players are late in the box. When I watched the but you have Mamela, you have Mamela. But who Mamela else was, was the guy I'm talking that attacks very well? You've yeah. got Kalim, yeah, only him. Attacks, very, uh, attacks very well. You have De Jong. That attack. What kind of attacking players do you want him to keep there? And that is what I'm trying to understand here you're talking about. Because I he want more game. strikers. More strikers, Obina. Have more personality up front <laughs> if you're complaining about goals. Now, no, now you talk about personality. Personality no, is different. I mean, from I mean players. Up. When I say personality, I mean players. Well, uh, but, but for me, look, Ben is doing well. I'm not taking anything away from him. When oh, he's he goes, letting him down, Benny, Obina. This is the same Benny that was scoring last season. Tell me how many personalities he had last season. How many personalities up front? The but the, it, it does not happen in this season. Let me, let me explain. Just, it does not mean. happen. Let me explain. I, I'll give mean. you... I can call you Let teams. Me explain. Give me a chance to explain so that you understand where I'm coming from. When I mean personalities, the same the system that Benny applied last year is not the same as this year. Hence, that's why he's complaining about not having the players that he needs. So, so what he had that time, he had that um, he had that confidence on player. That he had a confidence that he rubbed on players because mm -hmm. if you saw the players that he had. It wasn't players that um, it wasn't players that you feel that they will get you something, but he was behind them. He motivated them and then he drilled them. They got into a phase now where they hit a slam. That's why now he's looking because you still have a duly that is there that is keeping on the bench. What's the reason for keeping you on the bench? He comes in and then he scores. So why are you complaining about goals when you're keeping a striker that is scoring goals for you? Hmm. Hello. Hello. Are you there? Oh, look. Well, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 we, we can argue this depends on philosophy. It depends on. I know you're a striker, Obina. I know you're a striker. 
That I know for sure. Look, that's why I'm telling you. We when I played for Benoni, we had it was only me up front. Loans because tried. of your brave. No, we use it as a point of listen, That is why I'm telling you. But I had, I had Bennett Parker. I had. Uh, they were using I, you I as a point of reference. I, exactly, exactly. Yeah, so who is the point I'm of reference? Say, listen, all I'm trying to say is not necessary. Having two strikers up front is the problem. The problem. Okay. I'm saying the okay. solution is to have the I'm two strikers up front. I'm saying the solution is. You can see the one strike it doesn't work. Why still apply it and complain about goals? Put two. This is like you, you are leading. Instead of defending, you want to attack. And then it's not, it, it's 89 minutes on the clock. You want to put hey, a striker. What are you doing? Pep Guardiola plays only one striker or no, no striker. No, no, no. This no is striker. This is South Africa. <laughs> no striker. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was good. That was going to be my point. That some yeah. teams play with no strikers at all. With no striker the whole, the, the whole the, the, the thing is about if you want to play with one striker, I've said this earlier before, coach it right. Put it well. You know, you need to know how, the like he says, when I was in Benoni, I was the point of reference. Like, everything comes. I was a playmaker, more like a playmaker up front. Who is the point you of know, reference at Amazon? Uh, you said? Who is the point of reference at Amazon? The junk. To John. Hey! The John is the point of and reference. Tuli and Tuli yes, and... I mean, they're No, is no, no, no. Tuli is, is, is on the bench. Tuli is on the bench. He page. came Don't in, come. though. He came in. No, but he came in. When exactly. they're in trouble. When they're in trouble, they want to put him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what he's paid but, to do, to get them out of trouble. And but again, no, sometimes but again, it's 90 minutes he's been to do paid it. to score goals, not to sit on the bench, man. Yeah, what do you mean? Like he came on. He came on. He's clearly not doing ah, enough in training. You know this, Kelvin. You know Honestly, it's all starts Kelvin, in training. Kelvin, anyway, guys. Kelvin, 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 remember, Kelvin, remember, remember when you put when you put two striker already, you have only two midfielders. When you yeah. have a team playing three midfielders, they overpower you in the middle. No, it depends on the work rate of one striker dropping into the middle. Nope, I don't agree with that. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, okay. I can't wait till you guys have teams and then you can play each other and then I want to see how that pans out. <laughs> oh, Bina, I want to play match with you. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes, Calvin, what's his first professional match against you? Uh, he says, Devil Ford Tech Easter says, Benny's style of play was bound to be exposed. Too many individuals there. Uh, Kamba says, I don't think it's about goals because his side doesn't have a lot of shots, anyways, and the shots aren't of a high quality. Um, so those are some of the thoughts and the team that can't create or have a sh lot of shots is the fault of the coach so he's laying the blame at uh, Benny's feet uh, whilst uh, you Obina say Benny is doing amazing he means this Obina means this no, 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 says, no. Obina says this Obina <laughs> says ah, Benny is here this. you're the one who says <laughs> Benny is here Obina it's says dead. Benny is here Kelvin says this and Kamba yeah. seems to agree with you. Okay, gents, thank you very much for that robust uh, discussion. I didn't think it was going to make you guys so impassioned uh, chatting about Amazulu and Royal AM. That's what you can get out of a nil-nil draw, folks. Content is everywhere. Uh, let's discuss the camp competitions real quick. Um, the Liberian opponents were Pirates withdrew from the competition, uh, which means that Pirates go through to the next stage. Uh, easy peasy for them. Um, at this point, guys, what do you think their prospects are in this competition? I mean, do you think Pirates are built to go the distance in this one? Or, um, you know, are they going to maybe find it a little tougher in the next round when they start facing the teams have dropped down and whatnot from the Champions League? Do you think they have the tools to, to make a, 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 a sustained run in this competition? I think they do have a chance, even though it's a, it's a Pirates that this year is very low in conference. I think um, if they can start fixing like crucial position right now, at least they've got a, a savior, which is Endai, the, the center the center defense. I think he has done absolutely well. He just need now somebody to pay up with him in terms of boosting that conference. Because once you have a solid backline, you start having that conference that the only thing that is left to do now for you is to have more creativity in the middle and then going to the final third. They have the ammunition. They do have players that can finish. Uh, it's just that at this point, yes, they haven't been facing the toughest of, of, of the teams in this, in this, uh, in this run. 
uh, maybe the next level is is going to uh, test them in terms of how they, they are playing. I see what Niaz is trying to do right now because you see an Orlando Pirate that last play that 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 there was playing under Zimbabwe, where you saw your two fullbacks going at the same time. But at this time, where we saw them playing, I saw them more consecutive. Marqua being a player that has been converted from a winger to a wing back, it offers him more in terms of when he's on the ball, that he always his mind is always to attack. So if teams also could actually be aware of that, I think this is when, when it comes to Africa, ways they're going to be exposed, uh, they're going to be exposed more on it. But uh, overall, they are doing well. I think they just need to polish up the finer areas, which is the striking. And something that is not making it easy for them is also their injuries. If they can get their players back into the field, I think Orlando Pirates will be a force to reckon. As, as quick as they can get those players fit, I think Orlando Pirates can turn the corner. Um, are we not? Are they much improved since uh, Joseph Zimbabwe? Are you seeing them? Have they made exponential growth in your mind you're, from you're, where they you're were? You're breaking. You're breaking. You're breaking. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. I'm hear asking you, you. I'm asking you if uh, pirates are much more improved or better without um, Joseph Zimbabwe. Um, have you seen them? You know, reach Look, another level? Uh, no, no. Um, um, I haven't seen. A, a much improvement per se, you know. Mm. Um, I was watching the game. I think Pirate is still the same Pirate that uh, we all know that they still play more like, I, I still call them childish football, you know, where, where they're more in a haze even when nothing is chasing them. You understand? Uh, for, they, from, it, it's my point, look, look, this is me analyzing them. It's not about, it might be wrong, it might be right, but this is how I see them. It, when they build from the, the first half, the first phase of the field into the second phase, the incision where they're supposed to be fast, they know. But where they're supposed to come down in the third half, come down, look for his pain, they, they become in a hurry. You know, and this has been one thing, this is the way I've seen some uh, pirates for, for such a long time, you know, they're not improving from that. So, and, and again, this is also where Zimbabwe uh, was saying that the players, you know, the, 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 the academy of the players, you know, where they come from, it, it's wrong. They, 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 they were developed wrong, you know. So uh, for me, I just believe the coaches are trying and doing their best and also take this uh, in mind that in pirate coaches don't sign players. Coaches don't sign players. So they work with what they have. So it will always, they will always find themselves into this situation. But for them to get into this um, group stage of, of, of uh, Champions League, it means they're doing something uh, still better. You understand? But again, Zim uh, the, the last coach that was there went into the group stage, went into uh, I think it was semi-final. They, they left in semi-final. They were knocked out in semi-final. So, um, for them, I think they, they're on the right track. The more they go, the more they, 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 find, uh, they find their feet. But for me, I don't believe they've improved more than where the last coach left them. I don't think so. Hmm. Okay, interesting. Calvin Sosibo, what's your, what's your take? Do you think... Uh... Do you agree with uh, Obina or disagree? You you, you disagreed way, already. In a way, in a way, I agree with Obina. I think um, not much has changed with Orlando Pirates, even though they are trying. It's just that you're still seeing individual brilliance from players. Not players have come into um, understanding in terms of how both coaches want uh, them to play. You have a now that is there, who's coming from a team. That is a, a, a team that likes, uh, ha, enjoys more ball position. I think he's still trying to establish that and getting and drill that into players. Once that identity gets into Pirates, which is something that it should be easy because they do have ball players at that team. So for me, it hasn't clicked yet. Even the, uh, the coach, is, is if you can see the games that he has played, there's still a little bit of panic because... Maybe after when he gets one or two more wins on his belt, at least maybe that conference can come in and start rubbing off into players. Uh, getting draws is not helping Orlando Pirates. And as you can see from the position that they are in, it's not telling. 
if they were doing well, they should be upper there on the league. Uh, even uh, even their rivals have also picked up some uh, valuable points and they've, they've picked up their performances, which they are high up at the top. So they are the ones that are lacking and they do not have a, a problem of them signing players. So they still have the same squad. So I'm expecting that squad that they have since Zimbabwe is there to have matured and be playing a little bit better and with more force, as Obina has alluded to. And I think that was going to be a benefit factor because they tried to add some players. I think maybe the only downside of it is them having more injuries on, on, on their list. Okay. Okay, and the other competitors in the same competition were Maruma Gallants, who after a very strong display against TS Galaxy, you thought they were going to have that rhythm uh, going into a game that ended nil-nil. Uh, and unfortunately for them, because they'd lost the first leg 1-0, means, uh, means that they dumped out of their competition. But I'm sure, Bina, this is some good um, you know, experience for them. And um, you know, having played against such top teams can only stand them in good stead, surely. Um. Look, uh, I think this. If you if you look back at the team that are qualifying uh, for this group stage, you get to understand these are the the teams that have been in the group stage before. Uh, I've played in the, in this Champions League for quite when I was in Nigeria as a player. Even when I went back as a coach, now um, we played and we went out first round. Um, you know, one thing I, I realized is that. When you need to play this, you have to have a game plan. It's it's a different ball game entirely. It's not like your 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 original local league. You know, you need to you need to understand what you're going to a country. It's not about playing beautiful. It's about knowing what you're going there to do. Just like Tipi Mozambi, one nil they had to come here and defend it with their life. You know, because these are the people they've been in this Champions League for so long. They're now in Confederation Cup. They play in it the way that these are people that understand what it takes to to be playing in the Champions League. Mm-hmm. Also, Pirate Pirate are also becoming Pirate Sunders. They're becoming dominant in in this uh, Confederation Cups in in this uh, uh, Champions League uh, tournament. So they're moving away from the local league, coming here. Enyimba, same thing. I, I'll tell you the truth. Always, every season, you have two teams from Nigeria Champions League, two teams uh, Confederation. Every season for the past, how many seasons? But only Enyimba goes through to group stage all the year, all the year. These are people that understand how to tackle each and every country they go, how to play it. So it's not about how good you are. In a sense, it's not about mm-hmm. how good you are, but again, how you, you have to approach each and every country, not the way you play against uh, South African teams is the way you play against North African teams. If you play against North African teams, just the hostility, the way they host you there is quite different from the way you play West African teams. So I just believe uh, with Marumo, it's, it's, it's just a stepping stone for them if they could ever get there again. <laughs> if they could ever get there again, I think they will learn. But you know, Pirates are just, Pirates is becoming their bet right now, you know, just like Sundowns to go to represent the country very well, you know, in this uh, tournament. But I believe they, they've given it a shot and uh, uh, they, they try, they give it their best. Okay, okay. Well, we'll find out on the 23rd of December who they'll face in the next round uh, when the draws are done for um, the next stages of uh, the CAP Confederations Cup. Quickly looking at the midweek fixtures, uh, anything that prickles your ears? Gents, TS Galaxy versus Chipa, Cape Town City in action against uh, Maritzburg, Sundowns hosting Royal AM, and then uh, Swallows in action uh, against uh, Barocca. Any of those uh, of particular interest to you, gentlemen? Obi. For me, it's TX Galaxy versus Cheaper. Mm, I, I just want to see how that one will pan out. You have a, a coach at TX Galaxy that is finding his tune with the team, that is assembling now a winning team. Uh, that, uh, what? Their players they just got clapped last week. What do you mean? Yeah, but at least they're far better than Cheaper. Far better than Cheaper at this point. I think <laughs> they, they lost. Remember, they got a red card earlier. I guess, yeah. yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It did change the yeah, complexion so, of the game. Well, for me, for me, I'm just look. I'm saying the interest on this game is based in terms of a TX Galaxy now is more organized than the cheaper. So that for me, 
uh, is exciting to see how Chipa will actually come out in this one, uh, knowing in terms of uh, knowing the Tex Galaxy in terms of how now they are formed. You can see their structure. You can see the way they are playing. You can see now they are a motivated team that has a concept in terms of how to defend, how to attack, um, rather than before how they were. Yes, you see a kid also, he got his first um, three points and he also lost three points. So it's for him now again to come up and then fashion another win. We don't know what's happening with Devin Hunt, if they're still investigating on him or they want to just give it to uh, Kate Lynch's, maybe another two or three, four more games. We, we just have to wait and see. But um, for me, I'm happy for him. It's just that, uh, for him to get this experience at the higher level. So I just hope that he's well prepared for this organized team that he's going to be playing against. Okay. And you, Obina? Yeah, your think, pick of the uh, for me, for me, it's uh, Marisberg United, uh, uh, Cape Town City versus Marisberg United. Um, yeah. It's a team of uh, 10th position against 11th position. Um, notwithstanding Marisberg, they, they're playing, they played their 14th game already. Um, the past five games they've had, uh, I think they've had all draws and uh, uh, two loss in, in the last five games, if I'm not mistaken. Um, one loss, one loss, if I'm not mistaken. Then uh, why Cape Town City have won two, you understand, in the past five mm. games, uh, lose one and uh, draw two. So, uh, look, uh, the game here, Marisberg, uh, for the past two, three games, they've been doing well. At least getting draw most in, in the away game. You know, they've played two away games with two draws. Mm. And it's showing that they're very good uh, the way they approach away games. You know, and Cape Town City, I don't think with their position number 10, with the kind of football I saw them play, I don't think they're supposed to be in that uh, position. So it will, it will be an interesting game between the two coaches, Eric... Uh, uh, it's Eric Tinkler and yep. uh, and Mirinda. And you know, so, yeah. yeah, so I just believe it will be a very interesting game for both teams, both coaches, you know, just for them to stabilize um, their, their position in the league, you know, and honestly for me, Marisberg needed it more because with 14 games, we're sitting number 11, while yeah. uh, Cape Town City is 11 games number 10. I don't think uh, a draw a draw will be a fair result for them, but I think they have to go there to win that game. It'll be interesting. Another draw would be interesting. They've had four draws in the last five games and that loss uh, being the other result coming against uh, Kaiser Chiefs. Okay, so thank you so much to everybody uh, for sending through some of your thoughts. Uh, Muderiti says, Benny learned from Mourinho. Mourinho. Remember, remember, all the clubs the special one has been to, he excels the first season. Come the next season, he becomes something else. Uh, Bonga Mendu says, I'm struggling with network connection. I will try to join next week. I share the same sentiments with Obina. Okay, and you might also be sharing the same internet connection with him because, uh, yeah, he's, uh, you were in and out today, this evening. But uh, you stuck it out to the end, and we appreciate that, Mr. Okafor. And you too, Mr. Sosibo. Uh, you got that good fiber, I'm sure, going there. Uh, we never have any buffering <laughs> issues with you. Thank you so much, gents. Really uh, enjoyed hanging out with you. And thank you to everybody who's been tuned in on our YouTube channel, checking us out. Monday Night Football coming to an end on the 6th of December. But do remember to check out on the platform that chat that we had with Mazola Mulefe around what's happening with the Kaiser Chiefs situation and them not being present at the game this weekend and everyone else, including their opponents and the referees, was. So we'll see how this one plays out. And of course, we'll also, also speak about Safa and Bafana Bafana. But once Safa inevitably asked for that report detailing the reasons as to why they've kind of been battered away by uh, FIFA. So we'll discuss it when the details are around and not the speculation. Thank you so much for tuning in tonight. Hope you have yourselves a good week. Enjoy December. Be safe. Uh, and uh, we'll catch up in a week's time. Until next time, for myself, Kamumbata, and the panel, and for Dell behind the scenes, take care. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Sure. Go watch right. Arsenal. Yeah. Okay. Shout. We'll talk. Things. Shout. Shout.